My first ever guest is Sam Tung, a storyboard artist for film, animation, and video games in Los Angeles. His RPG credits include co-creating one of my top three favorite RPGs of all time, Escape from Dino Island, uh, and I reviewed that game here on this channel and linked it down below. Uh, he's also illustrated for The Gauntlet and Nick Bates' upcoming Stealing the Throne, which I've actually backed and I'm looking forward to. So how you doing, Sam? I'm, I'm great, Dave. Thanks for having me. Uh, big fan and uh, always appreciate the, the Dino Island love. So I'm excited to be here. And oh, yeah, man, for sure. And all that other stuff. What is it like noon over there? It's super early, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Noon out here on the West Coast. So I'm um, <laughs> kind of just getting my day going, my Saturday going, but it's That'd nice. nice. Yeah. Um, did anything cool happen to you this week? You know, the thing with the thing with film sometimes you can't you can't always talk about the things, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, I'm always like kind of cooking on some side projects and collaborating with some buddies and stuff like that. So it's always always feels good when you sort of feel like you made a breakthrough or maybe get a little nibble or some interest or some things in some direction. Sure. So, um, sorry, sorry for for vague booking, but um, no, it's cool. away on personal projects, and that's always very satisfying. I just I just like the uh, the the slang you're throwing out vague booking oh i feel like people people say vague booking like regarding like facebook posts usually when somebody like you know you you like imply that there's something like dramatic going on with your life but you don't give anybody oh, any nice, details nice. that they can't actually talk about it. But, you know i had a i have a whole like segment later in this interview where i wanted to ask you ex about some exclusive hot off the press hollywood slang like what what's 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 cooking over there word wise i love the slang you know the industry slang yeah, I mean, I feel like industry slang, sometimes it's hard to like think about what it is just because it just becomes so so much a part of my language. Uh, something I said at, at work the other day, oh, sorry, my dog, you might hear my dog running around. Yeah, um, sure. Something that I said at work the other day was, um, we need more shoe leather in this scene. And people were like, what are you talking about? And, and shoe <laughs> leather is like, so like when you have a scene where like, people might be sort of doing something mundane and it takes a while. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're walking along or they, they open the door and they go inside and they take off their shoes. It's like all that sort of extra stuff that you might want to cut out is called shoe leather. Oh, um, I see. But you might wow. also want to add shoe leather in a scene. Like if you have people like who need to convey some information, you may need some space for them to walk. And so like that time where they're just like, oh, man, you need to awesome. fill it with visuals, that's, that's, that's awesome. shoe leather. Um, yeah. RPG wise, you yes. and Sam Roberts made one of the best, in my opinion, powered by the apocalypse games you have that have ever been made. Uh, Thank you. Just in case viewers aren't aware of Escape from Dino Island, it's a zine length RPG that simulates um, one or two shot Jurassic Park adventures, um, but with a lot more possible gonzo ele elements than the Jurassic Park canon has. Um, where did Escape from Dino Island uh, start? Um, so I actually had like started jotting these notes down like years ago, like I think like 2015. Um, I was like kind of making this like little sort of like world of dungeons hack and I didn't world get that far. Um, and I like kind of put it in a drawer. Um, and then a few years later, like probably 2018 or, or so, um, Sam Roberts and I were like kicking around ideas. We knew we wanted to work on something. Uh -huh. And I said, hey, I have this like little dinosaur thing I never really did anything with. And I showed it to him and it, and it had all the like, you know, the World of Dungeons D&D &D stats. And he was like, no, 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 no. Like it, you don't need any of this stuff. He's like, there should there should only be two moves in the game and, and it should be run and hide. And like, yes. that's all you need. That's and, perfect. and we kind of built the game out from there. There's a little, there's more than that in it now, but um, that's kind of where it started. And then when the first, um, so we were kind of chipping away at it. And then when they announced that first zine quest, um, I think it was like February, 2019, we like kind of full throttle to get it done. And it was nice to have wow. the deadline to finish. And was that your first RPG you've ever created or co-created? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd wow. like run campaigns and stuff, but certainly wow. in terms of like game design and writing, that was, that was our first. Wow. So yeah. yeah, first zine quest, man, you got in, you were, you're like OG zine quest guy yeah and i mean zine quest is awesome right I, like i yeah. get stuff every year but like um now some of it is like so polished i mean it's really just yeah. like kind of a launch space for even like full full titles yeah, it's, and it's, it's, of, it's interesting yeah. i wonder what zine quest 10 is going to be like you know just know, all it's, it's, like huge titles <laughs> full published books yeah, yeah. just and like so I think, free league 
Yeah, exactly. And so it was nice, I think, for us because, like, it was, um, you know, with a hard, one of the hard things about the internet is like how do you sort of there's a lot of content and probably a lot of it is good, but how do you sort of find the good stuff or how do you get that good stuff to rise to the top? And so yeah, uh, there's probably fewer people in the playing field at Racing Quest, and that that probably helped us a little bit. Yeah, I bet it did. Um, yeah. So there have been a lot of Powered by the Apop Apocalypse games since, well, for a while now, uh, and just since 2019, I mean, just, it's been exploding. Um, yeah. And some of them have been very complex, uh, but yeah. Escape from Dino Island uh, is, it's very focused on its theme and, and yeah. very tightly designed, uh, yeah. you know, obviously, cause it, you wanted it in zine format, but that just forced you guys to just pack it and 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 it's just polished right so how much of that focus came from you versus how the other sam sam roberts approached game design yeah i mean i think so we both come from from sort of like a hollywood background he worked as a, a writer and a script coordinator for a long time in hollywood and interesting um, i didn't know you that. know i'm still working as a board artist and and mm -hmm. i write and um you know this hollywood mentality is like very uh, it's like laser focused, it's efficiency, yeah. it's like yes. tight and clean and clear, yes. right? Like right. it's all about like clarity and efficiency. Mm -hmm. um, and so like we do kind of come at it from that that standpoint. Um, and also from a game design standpoint, like I personally am, am, am extremely crunch averse, right? Like I chasing like plus ones all over my 3.5 Pathfinder character sheet is is like a nightmare. Yes. To me. I can't, I yes. Just, I don't enjoy it. I I'm so glad. I'm it. like it's like music to my ears to hear you say that because you know incidentally, and this is not like a plug because I'm still in like alpha version. I'm I'm working on my own um, PBTA game, and awesome. uh, I just you know I had some feedback from a player, and he was like, all of your little special moves have have like a plus one plus two, and I got a lot of that from from masks and from mm -hmm. uh from urban shadows the, the mm -hmm. those creators uh, over at magpie games i just mm -hmm. like have a lot of respect for them but they are obsessed with plus one this plus forward plus you know, ongoing mm -hmm. and i stripped all of that from my game and it, it feels good like it feels good to just be more narrative so i'm glad to hear you say that you're averse to that yeah i feel like that's what because i'm always most interested in like what's happening with the story or the lore or something like that right and so anything that can like get me to that and not have to have me sort of tracking arithmetic or, or like little bits of currency i i always um you know i i, I like that focus and so i think yeah. that was definitely a goal and especially with a one shot right it's like i we want people to be able to like pick up this book pretty cold and get through it in a yeah. sitting or two and not have to like not to have to think track about a it. bunch of stuff yeah no it's just totally yeah. organic man i just yeah i dig it have you been playing any RPGs recently? Yeah, so I now I'm playing a, um, I just started a Beam Saber campaign, which is a, a Forged in the Dark um, mech game. Yes. Um, yeah, and so that's that's like just getting going. Um, it's it's pretty cool so far. I have played in, I played in a pretty long running Blades in the Dark campaign previously, so that like is helping sort of grease some of that transition. Um, yeah. It yeah, helps. I do really like Blades. Uh, it is a little bit busier than Powered by the Apocalypse, but um, fortunately, the GM handles some of that stuff. Yeah, um, totally. And then before that, I was in a, I played in a, a masks campaign that that ran ah. for, um, like maybe six or eight months, and and that was that was a lot of fun too. Wow. So you yeah. you've played enough masks that you're very familiar with that paradigm of of rules. Yeah, I'm pretty familiar yeah. with masks. I I really like it. I mean, I think it does. Um, I really love how combat works, right? It, it works like combat works in superhero adventures where it's it's less about like whittling down somebody's right. hit points and more about this sort of like narrative position. Yeah, sort of has it's so funny game. how that game yeah, is, is not a superhero game. I mean, superhero powers and stuff, they're there, It's but it's a subplot to angst and identity and stuff. It's just so, yeah, 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 exactly. It's yeah. so but, funny. You know, and that's what makes that stuff, those genres good, right? I mean, I feel like yeah. that's um superhero stuff it's like uh, spider-man is is freaks and geeks but also there's some superpowers right yeah, Captain America that's true jason Bourne, but yeah there's also superpowers you know yeah so, that's true there's always a subplot um yeah. what do you think you would ever create a game that has you know more like forged in the dark level complexity um i'm 
interested in it, I would probably want to do it with a collaborator who maybe uh, enjoys or is good at some of the um, sort of some of those more technical yeah. numbery aspects. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had a, I've been kind of taking an idea around, I don't know, this, it may even exist already, but like, I think there's could be a fortune of the dark hack um, about Vikings that could be really, really great. Absolutely. Actors, right. You could be yeah. doing raids, you could be raids, doing totally raids, deals, right? Like um, you could be doing mercenary work. You could be, yeah. Uh, you know, there's, there's, you could do a lot of stuff with like a Viking ship. Yeah, you like. could. Yeah. Um, all right. So what RPGs are you excited about this year? Um, I recently backed Into the Weird and Wild second edition, which is mm -hmm. by uh, Wet Ink Games. Um, mm -hmm. And I found that because, oh, I found it because I backed Charles uh, Ferguson Avery's Into the Vast zine. Okay. Um, which is like uh, kind of a weird uh, gothic. Dark. Like, dark. Yeah. Uh, you're in this like kind of expansive cavern mm -hmm. full of ruins. Um, and, and I love all that like Dark Soulsy medieval horror -y stuff. Yes. Um, so definitely looking forward to playing with some of those things. Um, and then I think I'm going to finally uh, try out Trophy later this summer with some friends. So I'm like, OK, yeah, that. Trophy. Um, trophy, the the physical the physical game uh, I've looked at and it looks really sort of like sexy mm -hmm. and interesting. Are you going to be possibly playing Trophy in person? I think so. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. So that'll be really cool. Yeah. yeah. I actually, I haven't even really dug into the rules and stuff yet. I just know that everybody is like raving about how. And what a cool, it yeah. It's just yeah. got a lot of really powerful presentation for sure. Uh, back to Dino Island for a second. Are you guys thinking about a sequel? Yeah, we totally are. Um, it's, it's a little slow going, you know, it's kind of, we, we yeah. chip away as we have time. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, we're, we're calling it Return to Dino Island. Um, that's like the only title you could possibly yes, the only have. Yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> like the thing it. you can call it, right? Yeah. Um, but you know, in the same way that like uh, Escape from Dino Island is very focused on one-shot adventures, we're interested in how um, like sequel stories can be made to work. And long form play is very, very common in tabletop RPGs, right? Yeah. Um, you have campaigns and so on and so forth. But a lot of those work more like episodes of a TV show um, mm -hmm. in a season, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you have a sequel to a one shot, but it's not necessarily a campaign, but it's another um, installment in the series, right? Yeah. Like, does that look and function a little bit differently? Does okay. that make sense? No, it does. And actually it's one of these other features, um, I, 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 may, I think I mentioned it in my review of Dino Island, but mm -hmm. what you guys have done was is create a game that emulates uh, a three act, Hollywood movie structure you you've yeah. made a, a movie game in a way a movie making game and so that's what you're just trying to do with the sequel right just make a mo a sequel movie making game yes story. right right and how does that um sort of uh form of storytelling right like interface with like the previous movie right and and how is that different than just like oh it's the next episode of the show and yeah um, that yeah, it's not a show. Different. It's not a show. It's a, it's a it's a filmatic sequel, which is yeah. a different animal. Yeah. Yeah, and I know that's like a little bit granular, but I think there is. Ah, no, I mean, I, th I can see the difference. That. I can see the yeah. difference. Yeah. Um. Um. Because each one is like pretty complete, right? And like. Yeah. Right. Sort of right. Other. Yeah. Okay. So, are there any other? Are there any Dino uh, Island hacks that you've really loved, or is are hacks allowed? Hacks are allowed. It's it's not technically OGL is it um I don't think so but I mean you know the, the certainly it's all based on the work of, of the bakers and they're extremely gracious about letting anybody hack stuff I mean we right. would love for people to hack Dino Island and run with yeah. it absolutely thrilling um yeah so yeah yeah certainly if people want to want to run with it like we, we would love to hear about it there's a guy uh Bill Radford um put out a few custom playbooks that are really fun so those are those are definitely worth a look um my buddy Andy Michaels, um, he's uh, been working on a teen slasher hack for Dino Island. Um, that oh, he's, man, that's he, nice. Last year he was calling it Slaughter Party. Uh, but it's really fun and, you know, kind of the same idea as like you, you can't really fight. The, the slasher in a horror movie is this sort of like unstoppable force, much like a dinosaur, right? Yes. All you can do is run and hide. Same um, sort of thing. Same sort of thing. There's usually a mystery that you have to uncover, like who's mm -hmm. the slasher's identity or his horrible origin or whatever, and then that sort of lets you 
spin the plot forward right so oh my just, god it's like yeah. i don't i don't mean to take anything away from him from him but it, it almost sounds like this thing can write itself the, yeah i mean the hack sort of structure right like yeah can, um, how can this um, sort of like survival narrative structure be applied outside of the specifically like dinosaurs on a jungle island um yeah exactly uh, yeah. um you know right. Andy's Atomic Ghost music, you've posted that on Twitter, and I've actually listened to it. It's so perfectly 80s. It is, yeah. it's, it's just, it evokes that elusive 80s nostalgia that you don't always get. And if he can recreate that in the game, then it's a winner. I mean, yeah, well, no everybody tweet at Andy and tell him to finish his game that's and what we're gonna do for it. we're gonna we're gonna brigade his his twitter account yeah um yeah. actually you know in in bill radford i've seen his one of his playbooks uh for the lawyer and i, I, mm -hmm. I was very tickled by that because in a former life i was a lawyer as well <laughs> so oh, i didn't know that I, <laughs> yeah i i did like uh bill's work there um let's talk about jurassic park Yes. Oh, okay. I'm going to do like a speed round. So uh, I'm going to okay. list all the Jurassic Park movies and then you okay. tell me if you've watched it. Are you ready? I'm ready. 1993's Jurassic Park. Yes. Maybe best movie ever made. Watched a million times. I like that. 1997's The Lost World colon Jurassic Park. Yes. Um, proof, proof that Spielberg can direct the heck out of even a middling film. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 2001's Jurassic Park 3. Uh, yes, I think it's I think it's underrated. People should watch Jurassic Park 3 more. Nice. Um, yeah. 2015's Jurassic World. Uh, yes, it's it's okay. I've only watched it once. I think uh, it gets away with a lot because the lead actors are charming. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 2018's Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. Uh, yes. Um, the director directed a really good horror film called The Orphanage, so that is worth a watch. Um, it has my favorite, it's the only Jurassic Park movie that has my favorite dinosaur in it, which is Carnotaurus. So, points for that. Um, nice. yeah, I don't know, it's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah. 2022's Jurassic World Dominion. I think some footage just came out for that. I, I'm definitely gonna go see it. So, so oh, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I won't yeah. miss it. Like if there's a dinosaur movie in the theater, like yeah, I mean, come on, gonna, like, we're, what are you gonna not see that? Come on. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Netflix's Camp Cretaceous. I shamefully have not watched it yet. I hear it's really, really good, and I know people who work on it, but I haven't, I haven't caught it yet. Are you but serious, I, I, man? I'm gonna enjoy it. I, I really wanted to talk to you about Camp Cretaceous in this interview. I, I just felt like we had some man. Okay, Next, watch it, and then I'm gonna have like a sidebar with you. Yeah, like, we'll do a follow I'm gonna up. Call yeah. you or something because we need to yeah, talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, okay. By the way, first season, it's two seasons now. First okay. se or no, three seasons now. I think um, so. I think a new one, new one just dropped. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Uh, but uh, the in the first season, like the main dinosaur is a Carnotaurus. Oh man! All right. Well, yeah. now I have no excuse now. No excuse. No none. Excuse. Um, no excuse. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, what are some things about the original Jurassic Park movie that that you love? Okay, yeah. So I mean, that first Jurassic Park movie is is incredible, right? So it it gets like the survival horror adventure tone is is perfect. Um, obviously, the dinosaurs are incredible. They really have this feeling of like they're they're genuinely awesome, right? They're like yes. awe inspiring. Yeah. Right? Awe inspiring, um, sure. Yeah. Uh, the themes of that movie are, are crystal clear while taking on a really fun adventure. Um, the attention to detail is incredible, like the uh, everybody's like costumes are, are like perfect and so iconic like they almost feel like animation character designs mm. they're like so clear hmm. um yeah I, I mean i could rant and rave about that movie for that's for awesome yeah, you know i don't know incredible. if you saw i just found a video on youtube that explains why jurassic park the original seems better than its sequels and one of the things it discusses i'll drop a link below uh one of the things it discusses is spielberg using instead of the two by 235 by one which is sort of mm, like mm -hmm. ultra widescreen yeah, he used, super a, widescreen, uh, yeah. He used a, a, a 185 by one which is a taller sort of boxier more traditional uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and he ended up he was able to just frame more i don't know he used the video explains it really well how he's able to frame and and make moments seem more uh 
monumental with by being able to use that vertical space more. Right, he's got more vertical space to compose. Yeah. Shots of and point up a little bit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love that sort of stuff. Like, I, I think I should have gone to film school. It's like sort of a passion that I've never really formally studied at all. Mm -hmm. Go to film school or don't. I didn't go to film school, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe I can just learn online, get an online degree or something. You can, there's so much knowledge out there that you can you can take in, you know, and if, yeah. if you know it, you know it, right? There's True. there's careers certainly like if you're a doctor or a lawyer, you should probably have a degree before you're cutting people open or whatever. But um, <laughs> yeah. But for film school, you're right. You don't necessarily need to. So. That's, that's true. How many dinosaur models do you own? Oh my Your God, toys? there's like, I, I I don't even think I could, I could give you a number. I mean. Oh, so you have a lot? There's a lot. There's, there's a, there's a big plastic, like Rubbermaid thing. That's like basically full of dinosaurs in my closet. Oh my I mean, there's God. in this house, there's probably 50 dinosaurs. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's uh, a lot. Of do dinosaurs. you have like a favorite brand or something? Um, right now there is the, the, top dino toy brand is there's a chinese company called pnso it's mm. like four letters and they mm -hmm. um they're making really nice really really accurate dinosaurs they're, they're mm. a little pricier but they're um they're very nice worth a look um this guy dave silva has a has a series called um beasts of the mesozoic and they're like uh dinosaur action figures they have like joints and they move and stuff yeah. so like those are those are super nice um and then safari limited also is uh you can find the safari dinosaurs pretty pretty much everywhere and they're they're really nice little, little right stuff right I, I think i'm gonna have to show you some of my stuff right now please yes um, i would love to see so that. i have like the what you call the toy level like you yeah. know you go to target and you buy the toy yep um models and I, I guess i don't have much to say about them other than i have a complaint all right so yeah. this is like your your standard t-rex yeah, my like green, my parts, green yeah. screen's looking terrible there and then yeah. you have the, this newer line has, okay, so the, you know, your standard deal has a, has the controllable, controllable mouth. Yeah. The newer ones have a controllable mouth, but the default mouth position is open. So I'm pushing the button now, and then now I'm not pushing the button. That's how they look on the oh, shelf. Oh, that's goofy. I don't like it. And like yeah. now all of these things have their mouths open and just hanging open all the time. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, close your mouth. So I'm, I'm even thinking about maybe like gluing them or something, but there are some people in my house who would not be happy with me gluing these shut. Mm -hmm. um, nevertheless, you know, these Jurassic world brand models, they're, they're actually not bad, like quality and color wise. Yeah. And I mean, the sculpt is pretty good. You get a decent amount of detail. I mean, growing up like the Jurassic park, action figure line was like i was all about it right my brother too. had a yeah. ton of Jurassic park toys um yeah so i i, um, I think it's great right i mean if it's getting they're pretty good right dinosaurs, like, um i also i have a 3d printer and oh, uh, cool. i've been printing i you know i haven't gotten too into it but i've been printing my own um whoa that's a uh, diplodocus that's wild where are you getting the the model like the um, um the i'll have to i'll link it below it's just one dude he sells these models so these aren't free but you know you you can buy the whole the whole pack or whatever and then print and, it it's um, ready to print it. yeah and then go nuts i'm not like a model painter or anything but yeah. i do like having the ability to like just go crazy <laughs> oh those are awesome man yeah what is the actual survivability of a t-rex encounter uh it's i think your chances are probably not not great um right. certainly if it gets a hold of you right so yeah. um so like the the thing about the t-rex t-rex is like kind of amazing because um we actually like know a lot about it um it's the, like t-rex fossils are relatively common like like mm. we have several really good specimens um mm. and kind of keep finding them and then because it's such a popular dinosaur like there's a lot of research done on it oh, so yeah, a lot of grant get, money yeah a lot of grant money like a lot of scientists are excited to study it so um so we actually know a lot about t-rex right and so mm -hmm. like it has this like enormous head right mm -hmm. it's small it's like five or six feet long um it has huge bite power um mm -hmm. like like i think the you know people run math on like oh the head is this big and the muscles would be this big and like i think it's been 
hypothesized that it had the strongest bite force of any animal ever, which is like I, mind blowing. I, right? I've so, read that by by like a by a factor of four or something. I mean, it's like it's got like something like eight thousand pounds. Yeah. Uh, bite force, which means yeah. it, could, it can literally bite through any kind of bone. I mean, it can just yes. bite through bone, but. I mean, in a modern day, it might be able to just rip off the top of a car. I mean, the, yeah. the, it's like a Jaws of Life times 10 yes, type of yes, bite. Yes, yes, yeah. Jaws of Life, Jaws of Death, sort of, right? Yeah. So, like, yeah. if it gets a hold of you, like, you're, it's going to crush you, right? You're done. And it needs a ton of food, right? If it had, like, bird metabolism, I think it would need, like, 250 pounds of food a day. Like, again, just, like, <sighs> crazy amounts of food. Wow. Uh, so, I think, like, your best, if you're, if you're going to use the Dino Island moves, right, like, I'd probably go for the run over the hide, right? The, your top speed estimate yeah. is like 10 to 25 miles an hour. So like if you can maybe get a good head start or get in a vehicle or something like that, like Jeez. that's your best bet probably. Yeah. But I would not stick yeah. around if that T-Rex is here. Okay, good. So I, I, I'm in agreement with you here. Um, you know, there, they, there's, I, I don't know how recent the, the um, research is, but they've found that the the olfactory cavities they have yeah. these huge sort of chambers where they can draw in a bunch of air and they have what it, they call stereoscopic smell so had oh, that's and crazy. um yeah so they they were able to smell as well on land almost as well as a shark can detect blood in in, in seawater which is you know oh a mile away and they could yeah. they could know where it was so Which that's what kind of kills me right in Jurassic Park, they're saying it goes by sight or movement. Right, they, right, they right. see yeah. movement. If I, I feel that with, you know, what we know now, if a T-Rex is like five feet away from you, it, it's just going to know you're there. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so. But yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. is not a good option. <laughs> no, nah, God. Yeah. Um, speaking of like cool dinosaur facts, what's your favorite dinosaur fact? Um, so I read, uh, like a year or two ago, I read this really good book by this paleontologist, Steve Rousset. It's called, um, The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs. And it's got all this really cool, it's, it's a great book. It's had a good, like, sort of overview of, like, sort of the history of paleontology and then also catches you up on, like, a lot of, like, latest and greatest things. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a really cool thing I learned in it that, like, dinosaurs had these, um, really specialized, like, super efficient lungs. So they, they're blood was absorbing oxygen, like both on inhale and exhale. Um, and I think bird lungs kind of- Yeah, I was gonna say that. birds, yeah. Yeah, and so so you get all this extra oxygenated blood and then I think the environment, the atmosphere was a little bit different, there's more oxygen. So like that helped them grow to such like massive sizes. Um, wow. Which is like kind of interesting and kind of, right? It's like, there's megafauna, right? There's elephants and giraffes and stuff, but like yeah. there's not a lot of land animals that are that size anymore. And that, no. kind of explains why and like that's kind of interesting um, so oxygen has something to do with it i've got i've got one for you uh, yeah hit fun me. fact the base bone at, at the base of the neck of the triceratops mm -hmm. is actually spherical and it is the most spherical bone ever found in nature in fact there's no there's no analog for it in in the modern world with any animal whoa almost like, like a like a ball and socket situation yeah but it's like a it's like a it's like a profoundly spherical ball also the horns on a triceratops are made of bone whereas all horns in all animals in uh in the modern day the the horns are made of keratin which right, is yeah. uh, which is softer and so the the horns of a triceratops were incredibly hard which I just love. I just, oh yeah, by the way, Triceratopses are my favorite dinosaur. Just, Triceratops just is, a, is a yeah. very solid pick. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So what's what's up with your favorite dinosaur? Why is it the Carnotaurus? Um, it's been my favorite ever since I was a kid. Uh, and I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of weird, right? And kind of interesting, right? You get like, everybody likes theropods, right? The T-Rex, the Velociraptor, all these yeah. dinosaurs, right? Mm -hmm. They're cool, they eat shit, right? And right. They the other dinosaurs, right? That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Carnotaurus, like you get all that coolness, but it's it's kind of strange looking, right? It has this like really short, like blunt skull, and then it has yeah. horns. It does, then, yeah. Um, it's like got these like long legs and these like vestigial forearms. So it's just like it's a very interestingly shaped. Yeah. Animal. Um, the horns was, are the horns are wicked, man. 
Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you don't really know what they were for. It's also like one of the few theropods that I think we've got pretty good skin impressions and it has all these like bony scale structures all over its body. So it's, it's just like kind of a wild looking animal. So uh, just a reminder, Camp Cretaceous, please. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on, by the way, uh, another, like probably my second favorite dino is um, this one right here. Do you recognize that? Oh, Spinosaurus, yeah. Yeah, what do you think of the Spino? Oh man, I love Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus is, is another guy that is wild looking. And um, Spinosaurus is really fun because I feel like at least once a year, sometimes twice a year, there's some new discovery about Spinosaurus and it and everybody has to go like redo all of their reconstructions and all their paleo. Yeah, like, oh, they float now. They float That's now, right? Yeah. Uh, what's the sail shape? They, the last big thing I remember was they'd found, finally they'd found a good tail and it has this big flat paddle-like tail for swimming. Like it almost looks like a newt tail or something like that. And Whoa. It's, it's spines down the whole thing. Um, vertical, so like a vertical sort of fin? Yeah, like a vertical, like- Oh my God. Tail for, for like pushing water, right? So it's just, it's a weird, cool that animal. That is wild. Yeah, no, I, that is exciting. Yeah. Um, so let's let's talk about Hollywood. I, it's like yeah. I'm I'm infinitely fascinated. Um, are you an LA native or did you move there? No, I'm not. I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, mm. um, and then I went to Bowdoin College, which is this tiny little liberal arts school out in out in Maine. And then I mm -hmm. moved to LA when I graduated in 2009. Did you do the yeah. did you did you go up the arch when you were? Yeah, younger? yeah, I've been up okay. the arch a few times. Yeah, right? of course. Of course. And stuff. Yeah, it's a nice place um, to go up. So how did you learn to illustrate? Um, so I always loved drawing. I mean, even I, I, I can't remember not drawing, right? Even as a little kid, I loved to draw. So, um, you know, I, I did a lot of groundwork, just like sort of learning, looking at comic books and, and things like that. Um, and then when I got to LA, I, I started taking it more seriously, trying to think about how to do it professionally. Yeah. And so um, there's, there's some really good art schools in LA that sort of you can do like night and weekend classes. Um, so I did primarily through the place called Concept Design Academy in Pasadena. Um, and what, what's really great about it is that it was a way to get training from teachers who are like professionals in the industry and, mm. and with the goal of getting my skills up to that level, but mm. um, without having to enroll in like a full-time like grad school program, um, which yeah, of course. I didn't really have money for at the time. So. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so yeah. it was a good option for me. Did you ever have like a big break moment as yeah. an illustrator? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I was, I've been in LA for a few years. I was working as a, um, as a production coordinator uh, for um, visual effects. And I was working on The Jungle Book, which was, um, it was a great movie, really exciting movie to be on. Yeah. And the production designer of The Jungle Book had been a big storyboard artist. Um, and he very graciously kind of, uh, his guy named Christopher Glass, an incredible artist, um, great production designer, and he really um, kind of took me under his wing and and mentored me because I said, you know, I'm really trying to do this. I've been taking all these classes, I had a portfolio, but I um, just kind of couldn't figure out how to get to my, get my foot in the door. And he hmm. um, really opened that that door for me and and had me do some commercial work for him, and then had me uh, do some movies for him, and then that sort of got my wow. career going. How so, fun, man! That's yeah, a cool story. So you, yeah, that's that's really great. Yeah, so um, you, you got to meet the right person to come. Like exactly, you. God, that's the story of life. What has been one of your favorite moments working as a uh, storyboard artist? Um, so the first like movie I got to do that was like I'm I'm on it, man. Was uh, was the Dark Tower, which was uh, oh. That was yeah, a fun it's movie. Elba, Matthew McConaughey. It's um, yeah. based on a Stephen King book series. And yeah. you know, look, the movie was not particularly well received, but for, for me, it was really special because sure. it, was, like, it was my big shot. Um, I got to go live and work in Cape Town, South Africa for like, whoa, three, which was awesome. Right. Wow. That's and really fun. God. That was really fun. The director was, was very open to collaboration. And, you know, I'd been a big fan of the book. So I got to, you know, be like, oh, he could use the you know, the black 13 orb from the book and the director's like, yeah, we'll put it in. And um, so wow. that was just Fun. Like immensely satisfying and, you know, sci-fi horror weirdness, like right in my kill zone. So that was, it was really special for me. Wow, great. that's really neat. Um, and forgive my ignorance of this question, but do they need a storyboard artist throughout filming? Um, usually the way it works is uh, you kind of, front load it and then sometimes there's some overlap so like you know we'll, we'll 
me and, and the other storyboard artists will, will board as much as we can. Primarily, you know, action, visual effects sequences. Those are sort of the first priority. Stuff that really yeah. stunts, stuff that really needs yeah. to be planned out. Mm -hmm. We'll board all that. And then depending on how much they want to storyboard and how much is left, production shooting may start and we people may still be on storyboarding. Um, and so there may be some overlap. Are there any like legends in the storyboarding world? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a craft that goes back to the start of filmmaking, right? So I guess there's, so. Yeah. there's a lot of stuff that like has been um, boarded. Um, huh. You know, if you go back and you look at the uh, old Star Wars storyboards, like so much of those like iconic shots from Star Wars are like, were drawn. Um, you know, Joe Johnston yeah. did a lot of them, who, who ended up being a huge director. Um, currently, right now, like um, Dave Lowry is a is a huge storyboard artist. He he was he was a board artist on Jurassic Park, um, and he does all of like John Favreau's stuff. So he does Jungle Book, Lion King, Mandalorian, um, some other favorites. There's a lot of guys working in animation right now that I think are are incredible. Um, hmm. Indo Santos, Ryuki Gun, um, they did like all that Legend of Korra, Voltron stuff. Oh, yeah, um, I think their stuff's um, great. Oh, yeah. so that reminds me, um, you mentioned Dave Lowry. He, he did storyboards for Mandalorian at the end of, at the end of the credits in the Mandalorian. Yeah. yeah. Is that his work? No, that's probably all concept guys. So there's concept uh, work. Okay. Yeah. So Hollywood is, is like, it's really very, very remarkably specialized, which I think can be something that's surprising to people when they first come into it. Right. That like, um, you know, I moved out here and I was like, oh, I just want to draw, man. I'll draw whatever, yeah. right? And like, no, no, there's like, there's storyboards for animation, there's storyboards for TV, there's character design, there's concept art, there's wow. like keyframe, right? So it's very, very specialized. And so those lovely sort of like beautiful paintings are, are what I would sort of call like keyframe illustration or concept art for me. Okay, yeah. yeah. Do you, um, where do you find storyboard art? Like if I wanted to see Dave Lowry's work, like where do I go? Um, he's, I think he's got a portfolio. If you like Google Dave Lowry, you can okay. usually probably be able to find his work. Um, what I would do if you want to just like see some storyboard art is look up your favorite movies and go on IMDb and see who yeah. storyboarded them. And then wow. Google that person's name and like storyboard artist behind them. And like, they probably got a portfolio. Well, I think that's actually it. I know you're a busy man, cool. Sam, and the day is starting now over there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just want to thank you for hanging out, sharing. Uh, I'll be talking to you on Twitter and whatnot. We're going to be talking about Camp Cretaceous one way or the other. I look forward to it, man. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm glad we, we got um, to connect and talk dinosaurs and movies and games and all my favorite stuff. Yeah, it's like totally fun, man. All right. Yeah. Well, take care. Have a good Saturday and I will check you later. Sounds good. Thanks, Dave. All right. Thanks, Sam.